Tell us about what's been going on within the last year. With well, in the last year, uh, we we were working on our mods. A mod is a two thirty six inch hemispherical tanks, one with alcohol and one with oxygen, doing this vertical takeoff, vertical landing. We did the first one with uh, retractable landing gear, so that it would fly initially, and then when it would come back down, it would deploy the gear. Uh, and land, which was for aerodynamic reasons, which worked really beautifully. Um, uh, we got a contract with the NASA to do these commercial reusable suborbital rocket uh, flights, cruiser. Um, so we're trying to get that, uh, to provide that and be able to fly those experiments. So we did some work towards that. Um, we worked on a couple of new uh, LOX methane uh, rocket engines for NASA. They're very big fans of, of methane because it has some of the performance of hydrogen, but at a lot higher density. Uh, so we're looking at doing, you know, providing engines for them, and we worked on them with a vehicle as well called Risk, Re Risk Reduction 2, which was a, a really quite huge vehicle uh, that is essentially a full-scale prototype of one that could go, you know, be launched on someone else's big commercial rocket uh, into lunar insertion, and then it could go from lunar orbit and land on the moon with a large payload, you know, a 100-kilogram payload or something like that. Um, they were originally looking at that to do, to land a... Uh, their their humanoid humanoid robot on the moon and and walk around with that. Now they're looking at other opportunities, but they're also lo looking at uh, autonomous landing hazard avoidance technology, where it comes down and it looks for rocks and it lands not on a rock instead of on a rock. And uh, so we have this partnership with them. We also did a lot of work with Rocket Racing League last year, and then of course just you know more of that development ourselves. Built this this tube rocket Stig uh, from scratch, which is a, a 28 foot tall, 15 inch diameter. Um, essentially, a, just a really, really big, high-power rocket, uh, which which we're going to do this 100,000-foot flight with, and then upgrade it so we can do 100-kilometer flights with it. Now, is that is that the one that you're testing at, at uh, Spaceport America? Yep, that is the one we're, we're flying there. Um, we. Due to technical problems, we didn't manage to get the flight off in our first window, and then conditions changed somewhat, and so we weren't given any more windows. So uh, we're hoping to be back out there within the next couple of weeks to actually get this 100,000-foot flight off. If everything goes well and we get everything back, then we'll do some refurbishing on it. There's a few different sections where we've already identified that we can improve the performance on one hand and also reduce the weight on the other hand to, to improve the overall system performance. So we're going to do that and just gradually work towards 100 kilometers. We hope to be launching, you know, at Spaceport America or, or somewhere doing very high altitude launches about once a month, uh, you know, for most of the next year. So um, now if uh, people want to follow, uh, follow the progress of that, uh, uh, where could they uh, where can they find information? We have a website where I do sporadic updates. Uh, I try to do more often, but it's armadilloaerospace.com. Um, there's, it has a blog and it also has videos posted on the front page. I just did an update about a week ago that covered all of the, the tube rocket work, which uh, uh, John was quite pleased with. And then uh, uh, we, uh, John has a, a Twitter account, id underscore aa underscore Carmack, uh, where he posts stuff mostly about the, the, the gaming or the, the you know, graphic side of stuff, which I think maybe five people in the world understands exactly what he's saying on things. But uh, I also have a Twitter account, uh, Wicket, W-I-K-K-I-T. Uh, where I post, it's about three quarters armadillo stuff, and then a quarter of you know the the Dallas music scene and whatever else I happen to be paying attention to at the time. There's a few other armadillo accounts who don't update very often, but there's also the uh, A Rocket mailing list, where which is always good for keeping track of the whole industry and having completely off-topic discussions just with rocketry type people. So. And the A Rocket uh, uh, mailing a, list would be kind of it's at exrocketry.net, and then uh, or if you just do a Google Google search for A Rocket uh, as one word, A Rocket. So yeah. What do you think you're going to be able to achieve within the next uh, year to 18 months? Or what would you like to, yeah, what we would would you definitely, like to do? Yeah, we would definitely like to make it to space. The company, like I said, is now 10 years old. The highest altitude so far is about 6,000 feet because it's been doing a lot of work on the VTVL. You know, for the, to develop the VTVL, the vertical takeoff, vertical landing stuff, it's not necessary uh, initially to do high altitude stuff because the, the taking off and the landing are the two most challenging parts of it. But, but we need to start getting experience with you know space flight, which has issues like uh, heat load during flight and reentry, you know, aerodynamic loads, aerodynamic stability, you know, the stability of the rocket itself versus the way the wind is blowing it around. Um, getting it to come back when you fly down range and it, you know, it, you want it to come back kind of thing. So, so we're going to, you know, hopefully make it to space this year with, with a payload. Uh, and then if everything is going well, actually start doing, uh, you know, revenue generating flights with scientific payloads uh, on the tube rocket and stuff like that. So uh, we'll also be working on the, the cruiser thing uh, with a, the, a new mod that we're putting together. And so we'll be getting into that as well. So there's some stuff uh, for some experiments. They 
are looking just as much for the, the, um, the experience of having integrated a payload as they are for the actual space flight. So for some things we could just do a payload integration with them, fly their payload to any altitude that we happen to be flying and then give it back and then they will have at least experienced that and then they can you know, go back and find out what went wrong or what went right, like you know, are their sensors working correctly and that kind of thing, so yeah. Now you mentioned taking uh, people into space. Uh, what are the developments along that line? Well, we're building a, uh, the first vehicle that has the payload capability to carry a capsule with people in it. Uh, we'll be building that this year, uh, get that into test flying before, you know, before the fourth quarter of this year. Um, the, you know, the initial version will probably not be the one that, that we actually fly people with, but, uh, but we're, actually, we're definitely on that path to start flying people. You're partnered with uh, with who in terms of uh, marketing that? We work with Space Adventures, uh, which is sort of, I mean, they are the only company who has flown people into space, so it's great to be working with them directly. Uh, they've apparently already sold 300 seats on our on whatever rocket we come up with to, to fly people on, and uh, someone won uh, a ticket, uh, a Russian guy, to be the first one, so so there's already a first person. So so now that we have people in the, in the pipeline, we definitely need to deliver uh, deliver to that market. Um, you know, I, I very much like to, to make sure that we can, you know, deliver what we're selling. So.